Warning. Warning. The views expressed in the following video do not represent the views of the DOD, U.S. government, U.S. military, or Sawshek Emergency Medicine Residency. Today's case of the week is on esophageal foreign bodies. Yes, I was over at university and I had an interesting case. And so today, that's what we're going to be talking about. So when we think about esophageal foreign bodies, we usually think about four different types of people. we got pediatric patients, them being the most common, uh, anywhere from like 80 to 90% of the people you're going to see are going to be uh, a peds case where they swallowed something. And then you got the, your psychiatric patients, you have prisoners, criminals, and then also adults with basically an underlying esophageal pathology. All right, so our pediatric patients, usually ages 18 to 48 months. Psychiatric patients can pretty much swallow anything, all right? And then prisoners and criminals, you know, contraband or drugs, they, they're seen by the cops and they quickly stuff it and swallow it. So, and then you have your adults with underlying esophageal pathology, right? Strictures, webs, rings, malignancies and uh, occasionally the food bolus that gets stuck. All right, but my patient I saw was a psychiatric patient. Yes, and he did not swallow one, not two, not three, but he admitted to swallowing five fish hooks. All right, so here we go. He's gonna swallow the fish hooks. And so what was very interesting about this patient was not only six weeks earlier, he had actually already had a lab, uh, exploratory laparotomy because he had swallowed five fish hooks before. And so he uh, had a, a healing wound when I saw him. And uh, what happened was a week earlier, his mother had passed away. And uh, actually, she committed suicide. And so he had an impulse to also join her. And so he swallowed the five fish hooks. All right. So I shot an x ray. And here we are on the AP. And you can notice that he told me he swallowed five. But if you see on the film, there's one. Let's count them out. One two, three, and four, and where's the fifth one? So, this brings up, uh, up to a very important point when getting films. I think I see it at the top there, but you should always get a complete view of the esophagus, all right? So, let's take a look. What I did was we ended up shooting a AP neck and lateral neck film, and then you can, now you can see all five of the fish hooks that were swallowed. So let's go over a little bit about the anatomy and where uh, typically, when people swallow foreign body, where they're most likely to get entrapped. All right. If you remember, there's usually three areas. All right. The upper esophageal sphincter being the uh, first at the aortic arch, and also at the lower esophageal sphincter. All right. So just taking a real quick look here, um, I marked C5 and C6, and what you notice is that the upper esophageal sphincter is actually made up of three muscles, one being the cricopharyngeus muscle, and that'll be the one uh, where uh, things will get caught up, and you can see it's at about the level 5 and 6, and you can see the hook is close to, to that area, and uh, you can see the fish hook there. And the lower esophageal uh, sphincter is actually the narrowest point of the esophagus. All right. So, there's our three anatomic landmarks that you should remember. In a peds case, majority of time, about 70 plus percent time, it's uh, objects will get stuck at the upper esophageal sphincter. And for an adult, though, most of the time it's at the lower esophageal sphincter, about 68% of the time. All right, so what was my disposition on this patient? Well, seeing how he previously had an exploratory laparotomy from swallowing, I called general surgery first course they were not happy did not want to see this patient again so I uh, thought to myself who would be the next person to call well gastroenterology right because what is the preferred method of removal of a sharp or pointed object that's been swallowed right well it's endoscopy all right we really have no further uh, really no further work that we can do other than get the right people that can help this guy get these potentially dangerous objects out uh, of his stomach or esophagus. All right, we don't want him to have a perforation, which could lead to, you know, badness, meaning mediastinitis. 
And so while we're waiting for our gastroenterologist to come in, it won't hurt to start some antibiotics. So in summary, the case of the week is really about sharp foreign bodies. All right? And they're pretty simple when we know that they swallowed a sharp form body. We basically need to get a consultant on board, either a general surgeon or a gastroenterologist that can possibly diagnose and also treat by removing the sharp form body. So the things that you should just take away from this uh, quick little talk was basically the levels of which a uh, form body can get entrapped. And you should remember that the upper esophageal sphincter is basically the most uh, common area where the peds will get things stuck and also for the adults it's the lower esophageal sphincter all right things I didn't really talk about were basically the scenario of the child who swallows a coin the child who swallows a button battery and also the smooth slash blunt esophageal form body all right so real quickly just so you know child swallows a coin scenario basically the questions are always going to be uh, it's probably going to be at the level of the cricofringes so that's the most common spot because it's a peds patient and also on an AP view you should see basically the the uh, circle or the coin, okay? As far as the child who swallows a button battery, basically if it's lodged in esophagus, that requires an emergent removal, right? Because the button batteries usually can be an alkali and it can cause necrosis and perforate the esophagus. But if it's in the stomach, some books were basically say it needs endoscopic removal if they do not pass the button battery within 48 hours. But more than likely, probably going to be uh, consulting for early removal. And then the final, let's see, the final thing we didn't talk about was basically pharma, pharmacological therapies in a blunt or maybe like a food bolus. And you, what you have is basically you have glucagon. You can give basically one to two milligrams IV. And theoretically, it's supposed to help uh, decrease or uh, the pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter. And then you also have other drugs you can use. You have uh, basically nitro, same concept. You can give basically 0 0.4 to uh, 0.8 milligram sublingual. All right, and then... Then you can always uh, go with basically, you know, Coca-Cola, some carbonated beverage to help uh, increase the pressure and push that food bolus back. And last, uh, Pearl, um, most objects will transit the remainder of the GI tract if what? Well, if the object is less than 6 centimeters in length or less than 2 centimeters in diameter. Well, uh, that was the case of the week. Uh, this was a production of EM Talk. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.